What up, what up, what up? It's your boy B. Grinch. How are we doing today, guys? Me? It's fucking like 3.19 in the afternoon. I just woke my ass up. You want to know why? Because I was up all night doing fucking podcasts that I would keep erasing. And what do they say? 27 times is a charm? This is the last fucking one I'm going to try to do with this fucking topic that I want to get out. And I'm fucking, if it comes out like shit, it's just fucking too bad. Because fucking, I've done like fucking two parts. I did three hours worth of a fucking show. And wouldn't you know it, they all got fucked up. So I'm going to try to do this one more time. And we'll see what fucking happens. Because I want to talk about someone that really fucked up my head. Another fucking girl. This is one of the reasons why I see a therapist twice a week. Because of the fucking silly decisions I make over my women. Really kind of over anything. But I'll tell you what. This particular woman happened to be the last relationship that I was in and has really been the cause of all the craziness that is my life over not only really the last three years, but specifically 2021. This girl has really done a fucking number to me and uh, it's ruined a lot of aspects of my life. And I never gave this bitch credit for the credit she deserves for the damage that she's done to be Grinch's fucking head. So I'm going to tell you the story about fucking Lana, my ex fiance the shit she pulled and what she's up to and what she's done. But you see, I started the stories on the last couple of episodes that I've tried to fucking record that I had to trash. I tried to do it from the beginning. But we're going to Quentin Tarantino, this motherfucker. We're going to start from the end and run up to the fucking beginning. I like that shit. How do you like that shit? I'm going to give it a try anyway. Hopefully it'll work. But Lana, you see, she's my ex-fiance. She's absolutely the love of my life. A beautiful five foot four fucking queen with a fucking real bitch attitude, real crabby ass fucking mood, and um, pretty much walls built all around her that I actually crushed. See, no other man is able to get to her like that, make her smile, make her laugh. But B. Grinch here, he did, and he thought everything was going to be great, and they were going to spend the rest of their lives together. You know, we were supposed to move in together. The couch that's in my living room, she bought. We were supposed to live together, but you see, she's a fucking moron. She does stupid things, stupider than me. And now she's paying the price. And unfortunately, because she's paying the price, I had to fucking pay the price. So basically, this is what's going on. All right. And then we'll give you the backstory. But my ex fiance Lana, she's going to prison. Oh, yeah. Fucking prison. Uh, Federal prison. No less. Federal fucking prison. You want to know why? Because she got busted by the FBI or the DEA for holding a large, large, large amount of narcotics for a Mexican drug cartel leader. Oh, yeah. No shit. Um, She's all jammed up. She was looking at six to ten years. I think she's getting three out of all that. And, um, yeah, this little fucking situation has really done done a number on your boy B. Grinch. Let me explain how. Lana and I had a great relationship. For the most part, we had our battles. We certainly did. My LSTV audience on Underground Live, they knew everything that was going on with me and Lana because I kept them fully informed. Of course, when we were together, that show was popping with like 1,200 views a week. I had a fucking entire fucking crew that was up on everything that was me and Lana. But you see, that got fucked up because Lana's a dumb motherfucker. She decided to fucking hold a mass amount of narcotics for this fucking dude who got her, guess what? Addicted to methamphetamines. Yes. Fucking crazy. Now, I had absolutely no idea that she had this fucking problem until she called me up one night. Probably It was the night before she got locked up, before she got arrested. And uh, she tells me, admits to me, she's got a fucking meth problem. So we weren't really seeing each other at the time. We were barely talking. I told her, I said, baby, You're going to move to Florida from Texas, where she lives. Move in like you're supposed to. I'm going to put you in the best drug facility that that we got down here. We're going to get you clean. We're going to fucking spend the rest of our lives together. She was like pretty fucking gung-ho. She was going to get ready the next day to fucking move here. You see, the next day while she was walking her dog, two FBI agents or DEA agents came up to her and fucking arrested her. She got ratted out by some fucking underling that was trying to get their fucking sentence lightened by ratting someone out. So she got ratted out. Bad. Real bad. 
don't get it, but whatever. It's all good. The rat thought she was banging the fucking head of the fucking cartel dude, whatever the fuck you want to call him. She probably was for all I fucking know. I'm pretty sure she definitely was. But I don't know. So I can't really say. I can only speculate. So anyway, when she got locked up, I fucking did everything I fucking could to fucking work this case with her to try to make sure that there were no fucking corners missed. There was no turns fucking that were not fucking seen to possibly turn down to make this fucking a better fucking lighter sentence for her. And I worked my fucking balls off with friends in probation, with friends I have in law enforcement, and even a friend of a friend that I have with the FBI. See, but no information was really, it was, the case was sealed. It was very, very difficult for me to help work on it. And while she was incarcerated, I went fucking pretty crazy. Um, I lost my shit because although she was dealing with the fact of being incarcerated, my girl was on the inside of a prison and there was nothing I could do about it. And every day I would try to help get work done. I was meeting dead ends. It made me go fucking crazy. Oh yeah. I went fucking nuts. It's fucking ridiculous. But nevertheless, I fucking kept with her, kept with her until of course, well, let me put it to you this way. While she was incarcerated, I asked her to marry me. And she said, yes. That's how we got engaged. We had a prison house fucking engagement party. Yep. She celebrated with her prison friends and me. I celebrated in the privacy of my own home by myself, like always. Yeah, that's how it works. It was fun. It was real fun. Nevertheless, this bitch, she gets out of fucking jail. And uh, we, we had some kind of fucking argument. See, because when she was in jail, after, after I said you were coming down, she was my girl again. There was a little fucking time where we were kind of shady on and off, you know. But um, we got into an argument while she was in jail. And uh, she told me that her ex-husband, Keith, was the one that was helping her out with money, with support, with everything. When that motherfucker, I've never even heard his name before. We never brought him up. He was so far out of the fucking picture. I don't even know where she came up with that in her fucking head to say. When she was supposed to say, yeah, B Grinch, B, Brian, you're the one that's been here for me since the very beginning. Well, that bitch wanted to piss me off because she's spiteful like that. She goes throwing another dude's name in there and it sends B Grinch over the fucking edge. Oh yeah, I was pissed. She says, you can't judge me. I said, no, I can't, but a fucking federal court judge is going to fucking judge you. Fucking put you away. Well, you're going to fucking rot for a couple of years. I get fucking upset sometimes. Not really that bad anymore, but you know how it goes. Well, you see, okay. She gets out of fucking prison, okay, after serving six months, or jail, after serving six months or so, incarcerated in a San Antonio fucking jail, pending prison, and... When she gets out, she calls me and I immediately fly to fucking Texas to go see her. It had been a while since I had seen her. We wanted to see if fucking there was anything there anymore. Well, all I know is, is that I met her new gay friend, Dan, and he's gay. Oh, he's gay. All right. He's obsessed with me, but not gay enough to be obsessed with her as well. Okay. This guy, Dan, I didn't like at all. You see, and I didn't like her relationship with Dan because she's a fucking alcoholic. She was an alcoholic. She was supposed to stop drinking when she got out of fucking jail. But this motherfucker kept her fucking drinking. He has in the past kept her fucking smoking meth so he could have things against her in case she doesn't do what he says. Real fucking scumbag. You might have heard me mention Dan on a couple of shows. As a matter of fact, Dan's probably listening to this right now. I'm sure he is. Dan, go fuck yourself. You're a fucking weirdo, dude. Go fuck yourself, Dan fucking asshole. Stop stalking my fucking shows, dude. It's fucking creepy, man. Fucking he stalks all my shows. He knows everything I'm up to. And he even when he texts me, he uses the words that I use because he's so fucking weird. He can't come up with his own dialogue or lingos himself. So he steals mine because he knows how fucking cool I am. I guess it makes him feel cool. I don't fucking know. Puts him on the level with me, which it doesn't. It makes him like actually look retarded. But Whatever, because he's a spun out fucking meth head himself. Oh, yeah, he's fucking bad, real bad. Fucking meth, fucking smoking motherfucker, Uber driving meth smoking motherfucker while he's fucking high and like three days without sleep. That's fucking Dan and constantly stalking my shit. So I got to deal with him. I got to deal with him stalking her. 
I got to deal with her fucking problems. So, well, this is all subsequent to me visiting her in fucking Texas, where the third night that I was there, which was supposed to be for like 21 days, I was supposed to be there. But around day three or four, we go over to fucking Dan's house because they were platonic friends where they got fucking shit faced, shit faced drunk. And I was very upset that she was drinking because she wasn't supposed to be drinking whatsoever. So in Texas, where it's snowing, mind you, I leave. I go back to our apartment, to which I find that I don't have a key. So I'm locked outside, and I forget where old Danny boy lives in the complex. So I'm stuck sitting on a stair by myself, hoping that she was going to follow me out when I said, Lana, we out of here. But she didn't. She stayed there drinking with fucking Dan for at least another half hour, 40 minutes, while I sat in the fucking snowing cold. Florida boy, sitting in the snowing cold. Bad, real bad. And um, that was when I decided, fuck this bitch for now. And she came home and we went upstairs. I didn't say a fucking word to this girl until the next morning when we woke up and she was on the patio drinking her coffee and smoking her cigarette like she has to do every fucking morning. Otherwise, she's a fucking crabby cunt. Oh, yeah, for real. So I go out there. I say, hey, Lana, the fuck was up with last night? The fuck is wrong with you? And she says to me. You know, if you don't want to stay, if you want to go, get the fuck out of here. So I said, you want to know something, Lana? One second. She goes, Lana, she liked to talk tough. But she didn't mean the shit she says. But B. Grange, he don't do ultimatums. So B. Grange fucking went into the bedroom, called fucking Southwest Airlines, booked a $400 ticket for the very next day, walked out on the fucking patio and said, hey, Lana, what are you doing tomorrow? She said, nothing. I said, can you take me to the fucking airport? Because I'm fucking bouncing. I'm fucking out of here. And... I think that's the first time she ever cried. She went fucking nuts. I didn't give a fuck because the craziness that I had endured was fed up. Fuck it. And fuck her. So, we broke up. It wasn't going to happen. I left and wouldn't you know it, she ends up hooking up with who else? Fucking Dan. What a fucking surprise that was. It really wasn't. Okay, I fucking knew it was going to happen. Dan, once while I was in Texas, tried to advise me how to treat women. Dan's like three years older than me. And I had to explain to Dan, Dan, I have fucking copped the hottest women in South Florida, okay, without fucking having some fucking 58, 50 fucking whatever how old he is, fucking old fucking motherfucker with his teeth. His two eye teeth are like set two inches back in his head. He's the goofiest motherfucker. Goofiest looking motherfucker ever. He wants to tell me how to fucking treat ladies. I had to let him know, dude, I had fucked more ladies by the time I was 17 than you will an entire life. So shut the fuck up, dude. I got to go on Boston Nova. There's a reason why every girl I've ever had is the girl that I've wanted. I've always gotten the girl I wanted. Never been rejected by a girl I actually really fucking wanted. And uh, they've been treated like fucking queens. So Dan could go fuck himself telling me how to fucking treat a woman. What a fucking moron. That's what fucking told me he was interested in her. I knew. I wasn't too surprised. When they got together, though, it was fucking crazy. Do you know that they sent me him a video of him fucking her in the ass? Oh, yeah. For real. Fucking video on my phone. Sent to my phone of him with his, like, fucking 10-inch cock of his. So I told him, go fucking hang a flag on that motherfucker because it's just fucking ridiculously fucking too big. Especially for ass fucking. Wouldn't you know that she took that fucking whole cock in her ass, though? I'm looking at this video and I'm saying, this is simply dirty. It's just fucking dirty. It's garbage. I wasn't really upset, but see, I like have this vengeance thing. You know, I used to. I still do because here I am blasting her on the fucking air. I wasn't supposed to do this. I promised her I would never, ever do this again. But after what she did to me just the other day, she can go fuck herself with Dan, her new boyfriend, and her whole fucking prison term because I don't give a fuck. She is out of my fucking life. See, it's like this. I took that video that she sent me and I sent it to all her daughters, her sister-in-law, her brother. And um, they were all aware that uh, she was fucking Dan, having ass sex and giving him blowjobs ass to mouth uh, on video that was sent to me. It was uncalled for, for what I did. Sure, it was a little bit extreme, but you don't send your ex fucking fiance a fucking video of you home, suck some fucking retard fucking banging you in the ass. You don't let that happen. She wouldn't let me videotape her on the fucking couch sleeping. 
she get mad. But she gonna let homeboy fucking videotape her getting ass banged? Well, it was really re easy reason why she would do that because when she'd let him do shit like that, he'd buy her a lot of shit because he sold furniture. Apparently, he was the best furniture seller in his district, like number one couch fucking seller. Because I don't fucking know. He's used to sitting on his couch smoking meth. Fucking, I have no idea. But I guess homeboy had a little bit of fucking pocket change. He spent it on her and make her do fucking weird things. He would also stick fucking butt plugs up his ass and ask her if they can call me fucking for a threesome because he's fucking totally obsessed with me. But um, no, I wasn't planning on doing that. Uh, then she went fucking, she got sentenced. And the whole time, um, well, she didn't get sentenced quite yet. We made up after months of not talking. After she understood why I sent that video, why I reacted the way I did. And she forgave me for it. Because she knew how dirty it was what she did. So we started talking again. And wouldn't you know it, this fucking girl has the audacity. Um, you know what? We're going to run to a quick break. I'll be right back. There are so many ways. I sit and count the days No one really ever stays But one day it just might all pay off One day it just might all pay off Yo, so, alright, I had to take a break because naturally I get thirsty I really wanted to do one straight fucking episode That was like 30 minutes, you know, long But what can I tell you, man? I get thirsty I like fucking cotton mouth and I got to do what I got to do. I really am sorry that I had to take that fucking break, but um, it's going to actually take probably more than one part to fucking tell this fucking story, but I'm going to get the whole fucking thing out. This is part one. So fucking, where was I? Let's go back to, oh yeah, that's right. She totally fucked me over in, uh, in Texas. Bad. And I flew home and uh, we stopped talking. For a couple of months. But you see, I was heartbroken over the fact that she was such a fucking cunt. And I don't quite remember who reached out first. It was probably me because I'm a dumb motherfucker like that. We ended up making friends again. Uh, she was telling me how fucking crazy Dan was with her. Um, sticking fucking dildos and butt plugs up his ass and doing all sorts of crazy shit like smoking meth and jerking off all night in front of a fucking TV. Instead of fucking banging her. Which is kind of weird. Real weird. I fucking get it. Dan, you're a fucking weirdo, dude. What the fuck is up with you, Dan? Fucking weird. Anyway, Dan proved to her that he was fucking psychopathic and uh, pushed her around, slapped her around a little bit. Um, but she stayed because she's a fucking moron with Dan. She could have fucking had me. But you see, the thing is that Dan has a little bit more change than I do. And she likes fucking, she's real materialistic. Fucking materialistic bitch. Another thing I put on the fucking chart of things that fucked up B. Grinch. Yeah, unbelievable. So they break up. She moves to fucking Minnesota to get away from him while she's out of jail, pending her fucking sentence. And she calls me up every fucking day, tripping her balls off, telling me about people fucking having seances in the basement of the house she was staying in and dude that was dying in a fucking bed. She was fucking not all together. That fucked me up really big because there's nothing I could do to fucking help her. She can't come down to Florida to stay with me because she's under fucking supervised fucking release. She has to stay with a cunt rag daughter and they wouldn't let her come to Florida anyway because I'm not considered family. So I had to listen to her fucking stories and fucking try to help her out from afar, which is very difficult and very many, me mentally strenuous. So strenuous. She calls me back one day. She's on her way fucking down from... Minnesota driving back to Texas for a court date and she is all strung the fuck out on fucking meth. She calls me telling me she's going to die. She smoked or snorted too much and she can't fucking stop her heart from fucking pounding. And wouldn't you know it, B. Grinch saves the day by talking her down because I got to go and that fucking cool. Yeah, I fucking saved her from fucking her fucking having a fucking heart attack or going into cardiac arrest. I talked her to fucking sleep. I was there for her for hours on the phone like I've been in the past. Always. I'd always been there for that fucking girl. She did nothing but fuck me. And not the kind of fucking that I like. It was bad.
So I get her back home. Wouldn't you know she's still fucking hanging out with Dan? Because Dan's still getting a fucking eye on fucking meth. She, she's going to fucking prison. She's still fucking smoking meth. What a fucking dumbass. Fucking dummy. Meanwhile, Dan the psychopath, he's fucking taking sneak pictures of her so he could use these against her when she doesn't do what he wants him to do. Fucking crazy situation. Well, the day comes where she ends up actually getting sentenced. Or as far as I know, she was going to get sentenced. And I wanted to let her know, this was back in January, I wanted to let her know that I was going to be there for her. I was seriously considering waiting. If she got a six-year sentence, I was going to wait for that stupid bitch. Can you believe that? And in the process of telling this girl on the phone, like I had many times, I'm there for her. I love her. She's the fucking love of my life. We're supposed to spend the rest of our life together. We had a fairy tale fucking storybook meeting which I'm going to back, go backtrack and get into that later. But I wouldn't catch your attention with that if I just started from the fucking beginning. So I started from the end. I'll take it backwards. Yeah. I'm pleading to this girl to come fucking, to come here to Coral Springs, which she told me she was going to do because she loves my house. She loves it here. We have furniture together in this fucking house. She was supposed to fucking live here, but it never panned out because stupid bitch got arrested, lying to me the whole time. Uh, she was a meth addict, which I had no idea f- fucking since 2017, the whole time while we were together and afterwards until she admitted to me, I knew she was a speed freak. I never knew it was fine. I thought it was diet pills because, you know, I like women 5'5", five, 5'4", five, five, like 110, 115, 120 pounds. She was one or two pounds more than that. I thought she was just obsessed over the fact that she wasn't as fucking petite, even though she was. She wasn't as petite as the girls I'm normally with. So she was fucking eat diet pills. I thought they were just diet pills. Every morning she was fucking taking bumps of fucking meth. Even while I was there, it was fucking crazy. Just absolute fucking craziness. So I'm pleading with this girl. I will make your life right. You have a place to come when you get out of jail. She actually wasn't even sentenced yet. Um, But I'm pleading with her. Please, I love you. I want to be with you. I'll take care of you. And wouldn't you know it because fucking... I think Dan was there. She hung up the fucking phone on me. Last thing I heard was, find yourself a good girl, click. And that was it. I didn't hear from her again. Well, just the fact that she hung up on me, I tried to call her back and she didn't answer for like two days, sent me into a fucking strict psychosis. A psychosis that lasted me pretty much up until two days ago. We're talking January. We're in October right now. It wasn't until like September fucking 28th that I realized what the fuck was going on with this girl and just how badly she had fucked my life up, especially in 2021. See, here in 2021, when she hung up on me and I dropped into fucking disassociation, a disassociated fucking behavioral fucking mental fucking episode, she didn't care. I let fucking two homeless people move into my fucking house. Okay. Cause I wasn't thinking properly. I was fucking, Brian had stepped out the fucking room. B Grinch wasn't fucking there. I don't know who the fuck stepped in, but whoever stepped in allowed two fucking homeless people come into his house with a suitcase full of drugs and make my psychosis even worse by fucking getting me fucked up every day and every night to let them fucking stay here. In the process, they were fucking robbing me. It was bad. They fucking set me up, these fucking people, after like a month of letting them stay here. Um, they, they overdosed me on fentanyl. And I, the police came here and took me to the fucking hospital. And while I was gone, they robbed my fucking house after me being so fucking good to them. Crazy. Craziness. Wouldn't you know it? I'm so crazy still that when they came back two months later after robbing me, they brought my shit back and I let them stay here again. There have been prostitutes Three of them that have stayed in this fucking house because B. Grinch's head has not been screwed on properly from the damage that Lana has done. Okay, Lana, you get credit for this. One day Lana told me that fucking she almost killed herself. It was my fucking fault. Well, Lana, bullshit on that. I've done been nothing but good to you. You're a fucking bitch. And basically, you've ruined a lot of my fucking mental strength, especially throughout this year of 2021. Prostitutes staying here. Drug addicts. My fucking, my, my decision making was not even there. It wasn't even there. I let shit happen in my house 
fucking overdose. I mean, it's just been fucking crazy. And why? Because all I'm thinking about is fucking Lana and how to get her back and how to fucking let her know I'm here for her. But now, as far as I'm, as far as I know, she got sentenced and she's in fucking prison. I'm never going to talk to her again. So I'm trying to reach out for help to her daughter. Her daughter will not fucking help me whatsoever. So what do I have to do? I have to reach out to fucking Dan. Dan the fucking man. Fucking man. All right. Unbelievable. See, Dan was feeding me all sorts of fucking crazy information. He wasn't being totally honest with me. He wasn't being honest with me at all. Because telling me how she was doing in jail, in prison, and how things were going and why she was mad at me. Well, check this out. Not only was it not true, but she wasn't even in fucking prison yet. Her sentencing date got fucking postponed like four months. Wouldn't you know that this bitch didn't call me one time while she wasn't in prison? She didn't call me at all. Because I called her daughter some kind of stuck up fucking cum dumpster or some shit like that. Or a plank with fucking fake tits. I don't remember what I said, but it was fucking probably pretty fucking rude. She's going to hold that over my head and be mad at me for the rest of her fucking life? Are you kidding me? What a silly bitch. So one day, Dan says something to me about something that had to do with her, which gave me the idea that she just might not be in prison. That she has, or she had access to Facebook, which would give her access to Facebook Messenger. So wouldn't you know it if I tried her on Facebook Messenger and she fucking answered me back? That's how I found out that she's not in prison. Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. We became friends again. We forgave each other, which is another mistake that B. Grinch makes because he's a fucking moron and a retard. So she could break my heart even fucking more, which she did. And um, yeah, it was fucking pretty bad. Real bad. So basically, it goes like this. Okay. Her and I became friends again. Dan continues to stalk my shows, stalk me, text me, get in touch with me. So I got to start fucking with Dan now. Now it's time for me to fuck with Dan. I mean, I've mentioned Dan a lot of times on my shows for him to go fuck himself. Dan, go fuck yourself. I know you're listening, Dan. Go fuck yourself. Unbelievable. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, where was I? I'm so fucking retarded. This fucking whole story is retarded. Dan and I are fucking, Dan calls me up to fuck with me. She goes out with this fucking dude, okay? She's getting close to her real sentencing time now, okay? And um, actually, she was sentenced with a date for her to appear in court to get put in fucking prison, self-surrender herself. I'm sorry. Um, and wouldn't you know it that uh, she gets this fucking date to go in and... Trying to be a nice guy, I fucking find out she tells me she's going out on a fucking date. So I'm just getting a, um, a text message. I'm sorry, telling you guys I have to make you hold on, but that's not going to happen because we're about to end this fucking segment anyway. This is part one. She's going out with this guy. And I'm like, yeah, you think I'd be jealous? I'm like, good for you. Good for you. Go out, get dicked down. As a matter of fact, I happen to have enough money to come visit you. I can come visit you for like two days, you know, put myself up in a hotel because I don't want to be around your fucking cunt daughter. And uh, you can see me before you go away. But you see, she's got this new cock in her life. She never even answered me. That destroyed me. Absolutely destroyed me. She did not recognize the fact that I could come to fucking Texas to be with my girl. We love each other. But you see, there's a new dick in town. From what Dan says, there are a couple of new dicks in town. But nevertheless, I'm heartbroken and I'm very supportive of her going out with this guy because she's only got like a month left before she's got to do three years. Go out and have a good time. I'm not jealous. Dan went fucking crazy. Not B. Grinch. B. Grinch got his cool. You know, I, I'm cool. I got fucking, I got fuck. I understand shit. You know, I'm not a fucking child. I'm a fucking adult. Unbelievable. She posts, goes on live with this fucking guy dancing with her. I shut that. She's never gone live before. She's obviously trying to fucking prove some kind of point or some shit. I don't fucking know. And what is she doing? She's drinking. But because of the fact that he supposedly is a recovery fucking counselor, I was only happy that she was staying away from that fucking meth. Staying away from fucking Dan. Because Dan was sneaking meth up to her and making her be more involved with him. It was a fucking mess. I had to fucking deal with with her therapeutically. Wise, through talking. 
So one day I fucking text Dan and I say, Dan, you know, she went out with somebody. I had to make a TikTok video about it that Dan, she's got a new boyfriend and it ain't you. Well, mind you, she found out about this. She wasn't too happy about it. It's the last time we spoke. She hasn't gotten back to me since, which is kind of crazy because she should have fucking gotten back to me, but she's acting like the fool. So I got her blocked on fucking all my numbers. I got her blocked fucking everywhere. And I told her she can go fuck herself. Basically, she could. I'm fucking done with the craziness. I've had prostitutes living in my fucking house because of the craziness that is my life caused by this fucking girl. Unbelievable. Fucking crazy, I'll tell you. So I haven't spoken to her until a couple of days ago. Well, I didn't speak to her. I texted her. I said, listen, you have an opportunity now on Snapchat to get back to me and fucking acknowledge the fact that you knew I was able to come down there or come over there and you didn't fucking acknowledge it. And you fucking kind of like, I'm glad you got a cock in your life, but you completely neglected the guy that's been there for you since the very fucking beginning of this fairy tale fucking story that ended in fucking a big fucking mess. Um, she never answered me back. So by the end of this fucking segment, the end of these parts of this show, we're going to give her one last chance. We're going to actually see where this fucking storybook fucking in story ends. And with that, folks, that's the fucking, that's where we are, we're at right now. When I come back in part two, we're going to go through a couple of other situations that her and I had. You guys are going to get the fucking story. This is your boy B. Green saying, keep it real. Love each other. And peace the fuck out, people. Till next time, make sure you check out part two.